Hello everyone, my name is Lori Quiller and welcome to the Air Force Culture and Language Center's Facebook Live event for July. Joining us today is Senior Master Sergeant Anissa Haney, Superintendent of EPME Academic Affairs with the Thomas N. Barnes Center for Enlisted Education at Maxwell Air Force Base, Gunner Annex. Also joining us is Master Sergeant Aaron Haygood, NCO Academy Program Manager, also with the Barnes Center. Today, we will be discussing how an educational partnership between the Barnes Center and AFCLC will reach more than 27,000 in residents enlisted service members and educate them in language, regional expertise, and culture to help them better understand China and Russia for modern warfare. Before we begin, we ask our audience to observe a few simple rules. Maintain the principles and standards of professional behavior and communication. Please mute your mics while others are speaking. Hold your questions until the end of the brief when you may unmute and ask your questions. You may also enter your questions into the chat window. For proper OPSEC procedures and guidance and remain cognizant that Facebook is an unclassified medium. With these in mind, let's get started. Senior Master Sergeant Haney and Master Sergeant Haygood, thank you so much for joining us today in the Global Classroom. Thank you. So, so let's start with you, Senior Master Sergeant Haney. Can you tell us just a little bit about what you do at the Barnes Center? Awesome. Hey, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity for inviting us here and uh, being able to share some of the uh, collaboration in the past couple months and so. so. What do I do? Uh, I am the EPME Academic Affairs Superintendent. What that means is uh, my team um, of about 25 to 30 people, depending on the you know PCS cycle, we have four programs that we help manage, um, whether that be curriculum writing for two of those programs or daily operations. That's 81 schools across the globe. So we like to say that the sun never sets on EPME. <laughs> At any given time, we have a student, whether it be out at PACAF or at UCP, you know, um, that is out being touched by the curriculum that we help develop and um, execute. And like you mentioned, we have 27,000 students every single year through every single one of those schools. And that means that we touch about 10% of the force every year that these amazing senior NCOs and NCOs and civilians that we work with help you know, push and guide into the direction that the Air Force wants us to. So, sounds like it keeps you pretty busy. <laughs> sometimes, yes, sometimes. But it's a great mission. I would, and my job's out there posted for anyone who would like it. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Master Sergeant Haygood, what do you do at the Barn Center? Well, as uh, Senior Haney kind of alluded to, it, we develop curriculum here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am the NCOA program manager, so what I do is I manage the team uh, that is in charge of developing that curriculum, all the curriculum writers and instructional designers that write the course and all the lessons and figure out what content is going to go into the NCO academies. Uh, and what comes along with that is that I work hand in hand with the 11 schools, the 11 NCO academies we have across the globe. I work directly with them to make sure that they have what they need when we give them the curriculum and that they mm -hmm. understand what needs to be in there. And uh, I help them throughout the process to implement the curriculum. It sounds like you both are staying pretty busy <laughs> quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So let's shift gears just a little bit and talk for a few minutes about what educating our enlisted service members, specifically on Russia and China, uh, can mean going forward. Uh, why is it so important to understand these two countries? Wow, the term of um, has changed over the years, right, for what this means to us. But um, I'll take it back to when I first joined the PME world, right? And it was the great power competition was the term mm -hmm. of the day to be used. And I can remember sitting as a senior NCO instructor, helping fellow senior NCOs understand, and for the first time, really put pieces together as to why this was such a of huge importance to us, being able to drive into the why is it that we do what we do, right? As we shifted our focus from the middle or shift our focus from the Middle East into um, a strategic comp uh, competition, right? As we talk about our near peer threads or, um, or, or so, and so, 
uh, I know that watching senior NCOs light bulbs go off, and I know that that same experience is happening at every other level of PME, just further furthers the enlisted force to be able to create more uh, advantage that we have, right? We have one of the best enlisted force, we have the best enlisted force across the world, right? As we compare militaries and, and part of that is just arming them with information. What are we here for? Sir, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, I would just like to echo what she mentions there is that uh, it really does arm our senior enlisted and our uh, NCO core with better information that prepares mm -hmm. them for the future fight, what is coming. Because uh, she already alluded to, we had this massive focus on the Middle East and that's kind of shifted now to focusing on current events with what's going on with Russia and Ukraine and uh, China and their involvement and all that. So having this shift in focus really affords our NCOs a better opportunity to uh, prepare themselves and our future force for what is coming down the line. Now, AFCLC currently has five courses, and these are certificate courses on our uh, Culture Guide app. And today we're focusing mainly on the introduction to China and introduction to Russia courses because that's where the Barnes Center's um, partnership is, and you're using those in the mission lab. Um, Senior Master Sergeant Haney, if you could, could you speak to that um, a little bit on how that partnership came about? Of course. Um, so there are two um, people that are instrumental to this, and one of them is uh, Master Sergeant Baguada. He was our senior NCOA program manager, and uh, my husband, Mr. Haney. Um, as we sat and talked in actually two different conversations about the experience of the mission lab and often what we heard as feedback from the students and the instructors, it's just more basic knowledge, right? You're asking us mm -hmm. to, at Senior and TOA, is create an action plan to get after these strategic themes and topics. Um, and then, you know, as, as it scales down for the mission lab for the appropriate levels, but I don't know anything, basic facts about China, basic facts about Russia. Why is, how does this set this up, right? And, and so, you know, we would, we looked for a very long time for resources that we could provide the students and, and helping them in their research as they were um, um, getting after the, the mission lab and, their, and that outcome. But I think Ms. Um, Masar Fakwada, uh, as he's a LEAP scholar and he brought it up. He said, hey, we have, you know, the Culture and Language Center has this great app with these Intro to Russia and Intro to China courses. What if we partnered up and, you know, took some of that material and, and put it into the mission lab and had the instructors teach it or so, right, delivered in a lecture type format. And from that, as uh, Mr. Haney and I were at the dinner table talking about it, it evolved to, well, why can't we just ask the students to, you know, why would we water down what's already a great product and just ask the students to consider that as an additional resource for them to use? And, and it was an ask of the Culture and Language Center. I know that um, asking for a potential floodgate of 27,000 additional students a year could sound scary. And, and, and it was not taken like that at all, right? And it was I was so appreciative of how welcoming the, uh, the center was in, a, in just being able to um, provide us a tool and allowing for what potentially was a huge floodgate at that point and, you know, and having the students you know, to have access to that. So we really did appreciate it. And so two, two amazing personnel that like brought this to, to my attention and then onto fruition. Oh, the app is, of course, designed for that, for education on the go. So it does seem like a perfect fit. Absolutely. Have you had any reactions yet to the courses? They are being used currently, right? They are being used currently. We have, um, they have been loaded on all three levels of PME for ALS and COA and senior and COA um, in the current curriculums. And, and it has been positive feedback from students um, that we've asked personally, and then um, from additionally from instructors, just being able to see, 
the app itself just has a ton of great information. So um, I'll turn it over to Sarn Hey, good. You shared something earlier that I think you should share. Yeah, so there is some great feedback coming from both the students and the instructors regarding the use of the app and the information that's contained in there. Uh, most specifically, we in the course, the students have to do a strategic analysis of a current event type threat and write a paper on that. And most of those current events kind of centered around the operations with Ru Russia and China. And so having this information from those two courses provides them with a wealth of information and knowledge that they didn't have before, that they had to find somewhere else that can actually help develop that strategic threat analysis paper for their assignment. Oh, wow. That's really good to hear. Thank you for that. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Uh, I'll um, add, one of the things that we're trying to teach our um, enlisted force is how to do that research, right? And showing them what mm -hmm. good resources should look like and what kind of information they should be looking for. It's part of the digital literacy and everything as a, as a foundational competency that we try to achieve, right? That may not be an outright explicit outcome, but it is something that we support and definitely try to um, educate the force how to do these things while also trying to get after it. And, and, and so the resources that you guys provide just allows them to hone and, and, and calibrate themselves as to what a good resource out there online looks like. Oh, that's so wonderful. That's so good to hear. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience or especially about understanding um, how EPME works and the Barn Center itself? Well, something that I kind of wanted to share is that uh, this partnership regarding these two intro to Russia and intro to culture um, China courses have kind of evolved a little bit more um, to mm -hmm. the point that we are looking at having additional resources on the app um, implemented into the next release of our curriculum, uh, most specifically around world cultures, dominant mm -hmm. world cultures, and um, extremist organizations. So there's a lot of videos and information on there regarding uh, the cross-cultural competence course mm -hmm. is one that we're looking at implementing. And then also the uh, awareness of violent extremist organization video series that's on there for integrated deterrence. Uh, so coming up in the next couple months when we release the new curriculum, we're gonna be adding a lot more of that information as well and providing even more resources that the Culture and Language Center has provided to us. So that's the biggest impact as well in addition to those two courses. Oh, wow, that's really good. And for those of us, uh, for those who are watching and don't know how to get the app, it's really simple. Go to your either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and type in AFCLC or Culture Guide and you can download the app. It's free. Um, download it to your system and uh, start start learning. Um, I think we may have a few questions, but I wanted to thank you both for for that information. That was really, really nice to hear. Um, so let's let's um, go to the chat room here. Let's see if we have any questions loaded in. Whoops. Let's see, we do have uh, one question. Why is the culture training important to include in MP EPME, the culture training part? Would anyone like to? Uh, Take on that, tackle that question. I'm going to have uh, Sergeant Haygood answer this question with specific details. It is a, it is a requirement, right? We are mm -hmm. um, most of our PME, whether it be O or E PME, it is driven by requirements that are higher headquarters or uh, you know, DOD or or joint uh, requirements, and so there is a requirement for this. I'm going to let you expand on this, Sergeant Haygood. Yeah, absolutely. So, like she mentioned. Um, some of this information is driven by requirements from joint mm -hmm. staff saying, hey, this information needs to be in PME because it's valuable, it's needed. Uh, but more specifically, our NCO core needs to have an, a, an awareness of culture just beyond the United States because that's where we operate. We operate mm -hmm. globally. We are gonna find ourselves in many different theaters of operation. And without having even just a basic understanding 
of the culture that you're going to be operating in and around, um, you won't be able to succeed. And if you do succeed, it'd just be barely. <laughs> but having that <laughs> cultural awareness and that cultural understanding mm -hmm. just better enables our force uh, to succeed wherever we go. Very good and very true. <laughs> so far, that's the only question that we've had. Uh, does anyone who is um, with us today have any other questions they'd like to ask? Okay, I have one more. Are these cultural awareness requirements for both in residence and correspondence? The correspondence of distance learning or distributed learning courses have moved to the Global College of PME. Um, and so we do have a partnership to make sure that our courses align with uh, certain levels of access to resources or material. Um, and as we are made aware of requirements or, or what the case may be. Um, unfortunately, at this point, the courses are at the Global College for EPME just went live within the past couple months and they were already writing their courses. Um, and so the current version does not include the awareness that the, um, of the app usage and of the collaboration that we have with the Culture and Language Center. Um, but they are aware and that is in the works for their future um, versions of the curriculum. Is that the college that went live like in March very recently? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see any other questions? I think that may be the last, oh no, here's one more. Is there a course or video topic that you wish was on the app that we don't already have? I personally can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's already a wealth of information on there. And I know there's more information being added constantly, so. If it's not on there now, it probably will be soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> see, we have another, let's see, I think there's two more questions. Did you find that you got a, a lot of support for your leadership on this move? Absolutely. It was, um, it was, it was uh, just a complete no brainer for them to be able to leverage the resources around Air University versus recreating the wheel or trying to water it down for the enlisted force, right? Or any of the sort, any of those types of sorts. So it was a no brainer and absolutely applauded within the center to be able to say that we are using everything that's available to us to make EPME better um, and, and absolutely taking it to that next level, next step. I'm sure that having that outside source um, still in the family uh, made things not just easier, but more economical. And and also just easier because we're right there. You can work things out with us too and make things a, a little more um, traffic friendly. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Let's see, not seeing anything else. Michaela, do you see anything on the Facebook group? Yep, yeah, there's one more. Nope, nope. Um, I think that might be it. Unless you guys have any last th now, final thoughts that you wanted to uh, leave us with. Although I think we've covered quite a bit. <laughs> I truthfully do appreciate, you know, we have, um, like I mentioned, we have a staff of about 25 to 30 people, but the majority of us are military folks, right? And so we are here for three year tours or so um, and trying to learn a whole new business of EPME, 
um, education, and everything, and just being able to know that we can, we have so many things around us at Air University that we can help make our courses better um, than what we went through. And, you know, that, that, that is a thing, right? Always leave it better than what you found. So we appreciate that this is setting the ground so that as our, um, um, the next set of folks come in, we can let them know like these are the things right that are available to you. No, please know that um, these folks are ready to to do what's right for us um, and to do what's right for the enlisted force and 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 help provide as many resources as possible. We have one more question. If you want, if you don't mind answering one last question, let's see. Are you able to track documentation of training? completed through the app, as well as ADLS and other CAC-enabled platforms? No, I don't know the answer to that question. So I would have to refer back to the Culture and Language Center. Okay. We may, we may have to find a way for that for you. Let's see. I think that may be the last one. Uh, anything, any final words from you, sir? Did you have anything that you wanted to leave us with? Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for having me on here. It was uh, great talking with you and answering some of these questions. Um, the biggest benefit is that I am not a resident expert. I'm an instructional designer, but my background is aircraft maintenance. And so when it comes to China and Russia, I'm thankful for the Culture and Language Center to provide so much information to help me and my team better develop the course and provide information to the total force. Thank you both so much for taking time out of your day and, and sharing your talents and your time with us. Um, I'd also like to thank my outreach partner behind the scenes, Ms. Michaela McCurry, and our many thanks to those of you who've joined us for this very special episode of the Air Force's Global Classroom. And remember, we are AFCLC.